Hello guys, I'm up here. Today I have a new concept for you. Since one of you requested me to make a measuring tape, I said, why not? Then, today's concept was suggested by uh, this guy, I don't know exactly how to pronounce your name, but you see it on the screen. Uh, she asked me, if is it possible, please make a measuring tape. I know it's simple, but I think it would be a very handy tool to have for large builds. Thank you for your time, but thank you for submitting. Uh, by the way, if you want to submit any ideas, just go to the description, there's a link, click that, and basically you just have to fill in a little form, it takes 5 minutes. And there you can write any ideas you want. I swear I read all of them, and I actually realize the ones I like, so be originally you might appear in one of my videos. So let's start with the actual video. You can actually install this creation in your own world uh, using a one command installation, you just copy and paste in the command, click always active and then you're done, the structure will appear. You can click on this button and it will give you two spawn X. One is called point A and the second one is called point B. You can drop an item on point A um, remember point A, it doesn't work on point B. So when you drop an item on point A, it is going to calculate the blocks that are from point A to point B. In this case, it calculated 11 blocks. So if I count, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So it's 11 blocks. If you reuse this spawn egg, it is going basically to delete the, the previous point that you created, so with this spawn egg you can basically move the point. And you have actually to pay attention to one thing. If you don't align them, it is not going to work, because this system doesn't calculate uh, diagonals. So for example, if I drop this item, it is not going to work. Uh, yeah, it's gonna send this error message saying something went wrong, the system couldn't be able to find point B. Make sure that both points have two coordinates in common, X, Y and Z. So here's what I mean. So in this case they have the same Y coordinates, which is ok, but they do not have the X coordinate or the Z coordinates either. So now this is gonna work because they have the same Y axis and the same x-axis. They do not have the z-axis, but it will work. So at least they need to have two axes in common, so it's gonna work again. It also works in the y-axis, for example, so now they don't have the y-axis in common, but they do have the x and the z-axis in common, so the system is gonna work. This is just a definition uh, the basic concept is don't use diagonals, because the system is not able to calculate them. So if you drop an item, it will say that it's 5 blocks, which is true, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It also works the opposite, so if I place point A up and point B down, it doesn't change. I drop the item on point A and it's gonna say it's 5 blocks, so it works. Now, for example, they're not aligned anymore, and if I drop the item, it's not going to work, it's gonna, it's gonna send the error message. As you can see, it also says, and remember that the maximum distance between point A and point B is 150 blocks. This means that there's a limit, which is 150 blocks between point A and point B. This is a limit that I added, because 150 blocks are quite a lot, even if they maybe don't seem to, but they are quite a lot. And if both point A and point B are not loaded, uh, that means uh, your render distance is quite low, the system probably won't work, so uh, you can extend that limit, and I'll show you later how. So, for example, if now I drop an item on point A, it will say, let's see, 97 blocks. It's a number below 150, 
so it's completely okay. So now if I move point 8 even further, it's gonna say, let's see, uh, 143 blocks, which is right below the maximum amount. As you probably saw, and you maybe noticed that, the longer the distance between the point is, also the longer the calculation is gonna take. So this was 143 blocks, and if I move one block away, it's gonna say 144, so let's see, yeah, 144, so it completely works. So what this tool can be used for? Well, you can measure buildings, and you can say that, for example, uh, these are 27 common blocks, or you have a farm and you wanna know the dimension of the farm, so you place them and you see it's 12 blocks. 12 blocks wide. Of course this is a small farm but if you have like a giant farm this is gonna be useful because you won't have to count the block one by one. So this is gonna do the work for you. It's great. Now I'm gonna show you how you can extend the limit. Uh, you see that there are these carpets, they just um, indicate the group of the common blocks. You just have to edit the orange ones. So you open them and you see there there's a number, which is 149. That number is equal to the number you want the limit to be minus 1. In this case it was 150, 150 minus 1 is equal to 149. So for example if you want the limit to be 200, you just have to write 199. Oh, and remember that you've gotta change that number in both common blocks, otherwise it is not going to work. So now let's do a test. So it is 194 blocks. As you can see we extended the limit successfully. So these magenta carpets are just for the summoning of the points, so if you wanna take a look of the command block you can just do it. These two command blocks with the green carpet just play the particle, the red particle here and the green there. So here it comes, the most tricky part, the calculation part. Whenever the point A which has this tag detects a item in a radius of one block. These white command blocks just summon an area effect cloud in the block of the point 1. Every area effect cloud has a tag based on the direction they will be going towards. And these blue commands here just teleports every area effect cloud in a different direction. For example, the area effect cloud which has the tag negative Y it's gonna be teleported one block down every tick. So the result is this. I added these flame particles to make you understand easier. So when I drop the item, boom, you see, there are area effect clouds going on all six directions. What the command block in the red part do? They just calculate the blocks between the two points. The first command just adds 1 to the score whenever a area effect cloud is teleported. So for example, if the Amstand has been teleported 100 times, it will have 100 as a score. So finally we have the command which displays the distance between the two points. We use a tell row command and here you see that it displays the score that the armor stand gets, which as we said is equal to the number of blocks that it did. And here we have the last command which kills all the area effect cloud and yeah, that was a pretty short explanation. If you wanna get into the details of this, uh, just place it in your word and look up at the commands yourself. So that's everything about it. I hope you've enjoyed this video and remember to submit an idea in the form in the description and I'll see you next time. Bye bye!